Yeah, hello everybody. Welcome to my talk about uh, Crema, a cashewware restful HTTP message authentication. Uh, my name is Wirt. I'm from the Cologne uh, University of Applied Science, and this paper is also co authored with my supervisor, Luigi Loyacono. And uh, yeah, let's start. So, so, we are here at the security conference, and we know that security is one of the most important things in the web or in disparate system. So, in the web, for example, we have a lot of security means. So one of the predominant security means is TLS. TLS is used by many, many websites. I think almost 90% of all websites use TLS to encrypt the traffic from the client to the server and vice versa. And another very important um, uh, thing in caches is uh, scalability. So scalability is mostly ensured by caches. So caches like TLS are used also by many, many websites to pro provide performance, to provide scalability. And we have also uh, Cloudflare, for, uh, well, Cloudflare, and we have Akamai, we have Amazon CloudFront, which are very good CDNs or caching systems. Um, yeah, and also every web browser also includes a cache. So caching is very important. Therefore, I will you, uh, explain you how caching really works. So caching works as follows. We have two concepts of caching. Uh, we have caching with freshness lifetime, which works as follows. We have a client which sends a, sends a request, which goes through the cache, and the cache will forward this request to the server. The server will reply with a response. This response contains a cache control header field with a max h value uh, equal to 360. So, so this uh, max h head of uh, max h value, um, uh, yeah, it just can instructs the cache that he can uh, store this response for the next three hundred and sixty seconds, and the cache can store this response under the cache key. Here, this cache key is now uh, example of odd slash index dot html, and it will store this uh, this response and also uh, forward this response back to the client. And let's say we have some minutes later. We have the same client or another client which wants to ret retrieve the same resource again. And now it will send the request to the cache. The cache now knows that he can reuse this response and then you can use the stored response to, yeah, to serve the request from the client without the need to, di with the need to contact the server. It can directly send the stored response back to the client. So um, uh, here, this is the other concept of caching, which we call the freshest validation or conditional request. This is the same scenario. The server will now respond with, uh, uh, with a header field, which contains a validation token in an ETAC header. And this response can be stored by the cache under the same cache key, and it will be forwarded back to the client. And now the yeah, let's say we have some minutes later, the same client or another client wants to retrieve the same resource. And the, yeah, it sends a request, the cache can now use this uh, validation token here to, uh, to conduct a conditional request. So this request is now um, forwarded to the server, which includes a if not matched header field with a validation token. And based on this token, the server can now uh, identify if um, for example, if this uh, if the recourse uh, is a is the, to be because the resource still fresh or not. In case the the resource is still fresh, server can generate a triggered and form not modified the status code, uh, and it can inform the cache that the cache can reuse this response for the next. Uh, it can reuse this response. Uh, Okay, the cache will use this response. And one more important thing, what the, what the cache has to do is, is to update um, any uh, new header field or any updated header field. It has updated this header field with the stored header fields inside the stored response. In this case, we have, for example, the date header field here, which needs to be, uh, uh, which is a new timestamp. And this header field is updated. And so here, this header field is a different one because it's an updated timestamp. So this is the concept of freshness validation. And uh, yeah, in the modern distributed system, a modern web application, we have a cache as a image system, and we also have a lot of other 
integrated system to provide scalability and into other things. For example, we have a load balancer, which is also very important to, for scalability. And we have a pro proxy, which is important for business, business logic. And uh, if we have such a layered system, we, we have a problem that if you want to, if you want TLS in such a layered system, we have the problem that if we send a request or a response through this, uh, this layered system, we always have the problem that the messages are only protected during the transportation. And if the message is inside one of these um, intermediate system, then the message is not protected. So, which means that if the one of these uh, intermediate systems is compromised or is somehow malicious, the attacker can change anything in this message. Or if the uh, if the TLS uh, uh, connection is broken somehow, then also the, the, the attacker can change anything. So, therefore, following a trend model, the, the attacker can change um, uh, any kind of thing. You can modify the metadata, the content, you can serve static content, you can inject malicious client side code, you can, or you can respond in any arbitrary malicious ways to client requests. I can do anything. So, this is a, we call it man in the middle attack. And this is a well-known problem. A lot of solutions have been uh, elaborated to solve this problem. One of the solutions is HTTP, uh, the, we call it HTTP signature schemes, which works as follows. So uh, this signature scheme, they build a signature of the whole HTTP message and based on the signature, uh, a client or server can verify if this message has been modified, if this message has been modified or not. So, the signature process works as follows. They, um, we build a string to sign uh, based on, a, on the concatenation of header fields and the hash of the body. And then we build a signature value based on the string to sign. And then we build a signature header, which includes a signature value, a time variant parameter here, which also includes here to avoid replay attacks, and a key ID for the verification part. And then we add the signature header to the, uh, to the message to be protected and we send this message to the recipient. Um, and at the verification part, um, uh, this signature header get extracted. We extract all the meta information. We, uh, we build the string to verify, which should be the same as string to sign. And then we um, verify uh, this signature based on the string to verify and based on the signature value. So there are a lot of signature schemes available which you can use in your application. We have some from Amazon, from Google, and also we have also uh, published some signature schemes some years ago here, which is called Rima. And a lot of these uh, signature schemes they have one problem with caches. So, so this is the problem. If we, uh, for example, if we have a, a response which uh, is stored by a cache, and um, the same client wants to retrieve. Uh, the same resource again, and uh, it will send the message to the to, to cache. The cache will the cache will reply with a stored response, and this response here has the, includes the same signature as this response here because it gets stored. It includes the same signature, and if the the client recognizes that uh, uh, this uh, this message has the same signature as the message before, then it will yeah it, uh, classify this message as a replay attack. So this. This showed that signature schemes do not work well with caches. So this is a big problem um, because uh, any change or any uh, reuse um, assigned message is is recognized as a re as a replay attack. And this is a big problem for content providers, which you want to use, uh, uh, yeah, signature schemes and caches. Um, yeah, because if they want. Um, uh, if, if they want for end-to-end -end security signature schemes, they have to disable caching. And if they want um, caching, they have to disable the end-to-end -end security schemes. So this is a big problem, which, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, not uh, somehow solved by, uh, by current signature schemes. And this is why we carry our idea Crema, which, yeah, which, which brings security and scalability into, uh, and security and scalability into alignment. So, Prima works as follows. This is the, the signature process is very similar to the to um, to known signature scheme with some slight changes. So um, have a press a message which needs to be 
um, assign it and we have the string to assign. Uh, then we have two templates here. We have a template to, for, the, for the request and we have a string to assign template for the, for the response. And this uh, and the, and the, the signature process for the response uh, has a one modification in comparison to the current signature scheme that includes a cache key into, into a signature process. So the cache key is always the, the, the method from the request and the URL. And this uh, both component needs to be integrated into the signature process of the response in order to avoid swapping attack. So uh, before, if you use a current signature schemes, you can attacker can is still able to swap uh, two sign matches with each other. So we have sign matches which uh, uh, from an uh, uh, from another cache key you can swap this response with another cache key. So because the cache is not integrated into the signature process, the client can recognize this, the, the two signed ways are swapped. So if you integrate the cache key into the, um, into the signature process, this kind of attack is not possible anymore. So we also build a signature value, which is also uh, integrated in the signature header, which also includes additional meta information. And then we include the signature header into the to be protected message. And then on the, on the client, uh, on the recipient part, on the verification part, we extract the signature header and we build a string to verify, which should be the same as the string to sign. And then we verify the signature. And also we need to verify the signature freshness. So the signature freshness is a new thing which we have introduced. The freshness is a, uh, can be derived uh, from the caching information. For example, it can be derived from the max h value. And this signature freshness is, is um, allows you to distinguish between a replay attack and a legitimate signed response, uh, yeah, legitimate signed response. So I will explain to you this later in this uh, in more detail in this slide. So this works as follows: We have a client which sends a request. This request is signed, and so on and so on. It, uh, the, the response uh, has a max h value, and this gets stored. Then we send a, a get message to the same resource, and then we will the cache will uh, we use the stored response with the same signature. Now the the clients uh, verify the signature, and he rep he recognized that this uh, this um, this signature value has been already already been uh, verified before. So. If you recognize that, you need to verify the signature freshness. So the signature freshness is just um, is uh, uh, by of this measures is the, the 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 client has to just had to to take the time variant parameter here, which is a time stand, and it, and it also has to take the three hundred sixty seconds from the max h value, and has to add this three hundred second three hundred six seconds to the time stamp. And if the, the result of this addition is in the uh, is in a, the, the the result of this addition is a, a new time stamp which then if if this time stamp is then if this addition is in, in the future uh, then in the future compared to the current time stamp to to the current time then uh, we can say that this response has a valid signature freshness. So if you um, want to use uh, caching, um, uh, freshness validation caching with uh, Crema, then it looks as follows. We have the same scenario. We have the get, we have a get message with the if non match header field. And then we have, uh, yeah, the server will reply with a trial and form not modified. And uh, the, the difference here is that the server has to generate two signatures. One signature here, the validation signature, this signature here is the, and here includes the signature value which verifies the integrity of the 204 not modified message. And this signature here is, um, uh, signature here includes signature of uh, the, uh, of this message here. I will explain you this later here in detail so we can, uh, the cache will reuse this this response because they have a not modified header, and it will also use it will also update this header here, which is generated by the server. It will update this header here with 
uh, of this old one. So this uh, uh, header here with this uh, start get the, gets updated with this one, and this one includes a fresh signature value, and therefore uh, this value is valid, and the client can verify the signature value and can work with this because the signature is a new signature value. It's a new signature value, and this is a yeah valid signature, and um, the client can verify this successfully. So this is uh, the uh, the concept. We also implement this uh, uh, the Creamer with different uh, pro program languages, and we also test uh, Creamer with different um, different uh, reward caches. For example, we cached, um, we tested with a Chrome, Firefox, and Safari, and Edge, and we see that our approach works um, well with all these caches without the need to change the web browser. So we only need to change the client and the server, and this works very well. And, and we also tested it with proxy caches like uh, Apache Traffic Server, or Apache HTTP, and Nginx, and Squid. And we see that um, only Nginx has a problem with freshness validation, but freshness fresh works very well. The fresh validation does not work in Nginx because Nginx um, do not obey uh, the uh, caching standard because the Nginx do not update the headers if uh, the, the server sends a 204 not modified response. They, they just uh, reuse the headers from the stored response. The same problem is also here in the CDNs. If you have an extra fresh lifetime, the CloudFront and cloud, uh, CloudFront cloud works very well, but uh, if you have REST validation, in our process, uh, this yeah, Cl Cloudflare and Cloudflare do not update the headers, so the signature value gets not updated. But if you have a, a cache with is uh, in conformance with the current HTTP standard, then a Crema will work with your cache. And this is a performance evaluation um, um, of Crema, and we see that um, uh, if we compare. Um, uh, Crema cytic measured with uh, a message flow with, without any signature of, of any uh, security. And we see here that um, that uh, Crema only adds some just marginal penalty costs, as a, just marginal um, um, delays to the uh, message flow. Okay, in the conclusion, we can say that uh, Crema protects a uh, Protects messages against all the intrusive threat model, and Crema, the the the, the Crema protect communication has only marginal performance losses, and um, and because of um, any of the cache key, uh, we have additionally recognized that Crema also um, mitigates some uh, web cache poisoning attacks. More details about that you can you can read this in our our paper. So on uh, our outlook, we we want to. Um, Integrate Crema into caches so that caches can also sign and or verify the Crema product messages. And also we also want to deal with the confidentiality of uh, of Crema messages. So uh, Crema can be downloaded. Uh, uh, the, the reference implementation of Crema can be downloaded uh, at GitHub under the, this uh, this URLs, and you are free to use them. And if you have any questions, just uh, send me an email. Thank you very much.